Hey guys, Hook to Clash here and it's finally arrived today. It's the 2022 Lala Guide. Now, we're going to split this Lala Guide into two different videos. We're going to have a beginner's guide, which is today's video, where we're going to talk about a lot of the basics with the army that maybe some other guides kind of gloss over, refine all your skills, and then in the next video, uh, which I'll link above me if it's been released when you're watching this, is going to be an advanced guide, kind of how to take down each specific style of Legends League base with the Lalo, but let's get into it because you guys got to smash some bases with the best army in the game. I want to start this guide by talking about spells. Spells are so important for Lalo attacks and often overlooked in guides like this. The ability to maximize particularly a free spell, something that should be talked about a lot more. The pros will never miss a freeze and if you want to be just as good as them in Legends League, you can't miss one either. So hopefully by the end of this FC that we're doing here, I can show you not only how to use a free spell, but a haste spell. Those are the two main spells that you use with Lalo attacks. And what better place to start than the Town Hall? You're going to be doing a lot of Town Hall freezes, particularly on box bases where you Lalo through the Town Hall, sometimes through Diamond bases as well. So let's have a look here. Can we get the Town Hall in those two Builder Huts? Yes, you can. So when it's a two tile gap, that's a pretty easy one. How about this Inferno? It's a three tile gap to the Town Hall. And as you can tell, you can get that one as well. That's a really important freeze. You're going to do a lot of freezing of the Town Hall and an Inferno. That's three tiles away or maybe even two. Make sure you've got that one on lock. Like I said, if you need to practice this, just go into an FC. I guarantee one of your bases has this. Now let's have a look at this ground bow and the town hall and look at that. We can get the sweeper with it as well. And honestly, you just need to practice these because obviously when you're in a live attack, you're not going to have as much time as this to, uh, to you know, line it up perfectly. You've got to place it down on the flight and you've got to nail it. Also, hello to the one spectator. Welcome to the Lalo guide. Now, where a lot of people struggle is right here. It's on these diagonal ones. A lot of people can do straight line ones, but these diagonal ones. For instance, there's a 2x2 two two gap here in between two 3x3 three three buildings. Do you think we can freeze both of them? Let's see if I can land it perfectly in the middle. And look at that. We get neither of them. So when it's a three, uh, when it's a two by two gap between two three by three buildings, I know it sounds confusing. You will not be able to get that freeze. Similarly, right here, the uh, scatter shot and the town hall. I believe if I place this perfectly, we also won't get either. No, nah, we get the scatter shot. But if I place it picture perfect, I'm pretty sure we would miss both of them. I'll try again here. No. Nah. But you get my point. Yet again, you just got to know the range of the freeze spell. So crucial for Lalo attacks. Um, just being able to freeze as much as possible. Sorry if we bored you too much, Spectator. Now we're going to move on to haste spells. Oh, they're back. We're going to move on to haste spells. Because something that really annoys me with haste spells is how new players use it. You'll see a lot of new players. They see like the eagle here. And they're just going to drop the haste spell right on the middle of it. But... This doesn't actually maximize the haste spell. What you need to do with the haste spell is cover as many defenses as possible, but where the loons are going to sit on that defense. What do I mean by that? So if we were laloing from the bottom up here, I'd place it kind of like this. Now, why do we place it like this? So hypothetically, let's just assume this arch tower is down. The loons come to here and they're just inside the haste spell when they're sitting on the mortar. They zoom to the... Wizard Tower, and even though the haste only covers half of the Wizard Tower, it covers the part we need. Then they zoom to the Eagle, and as you can tell, the haste isn't covering most of the Eagle, but it's covering where our Loon's gonna sit, because the Loon doesn't sit on the middle of the defense, it sits like, kind of on the side from where the Loon passed from, and then it will haste off that towards the Mortar as well. So, essentially with your haste spells, you just need to cover the part of the defense that the Loon's gonna sit on. The next thing I want to talk about is Lalo deployment. Potentially the most critical thing for Lalo, and I'm sure where most of your questions lie, so hopefully we can answer them all in the next couple of minutes. Now, uh, this is an FC I did. As you can tell, 1 minute 38. This is when you're kind of, particularly for Blizz Lalo, but even Queen Charge Lalo, you need to start thinking about your Lalo at this point. It's going to be coming in soon, and you need to plan it out. So, when you're getting ready to deploy your Lalo, the first thing I want you to look at is the closest air defense right here. Now, why is this important? Because obviously, whether you've got one Lava Hound, two, three, even six, you, the Lava Hound is going to be the first thing you deploy in your Lalo. And you need to understand where it's going to go so you see which defenses it's tanking. For instance, if we had like a scatter shot over here, right? 
If we have a scatter shot over here, unless we send our lava hound like this, the scatter shot's not going to be tanked by the lava hound, which means we either have to invest a freeze or kind of just hope that the scatter shot doesn't destroy all of our balloons. So understanding whether you're going to need a freeze early or whether the lava hound's going to do sufficient tanking is extremely important. Obviously, in this scenario, the lava hound's going to do very, very nice tanking here. So, once we have uh, kind of figured that out, the next thing I want you to look at is how many individual defenses you can direct target with balloons. What do I mean by that? Well, if you place a balloon on like the edge of the base where it allows you to deploy it, how many in your initial sort of area that you're entering the base, how many different defenses can you target? So, on this one, uh, it's quite a lot. Uh, I'll get rid of that. So, we can direct target the Archer Tower, the Wizard Tower, the Mortar the Archer Tower here, and the Wizard Tower. Now, obviously, we can also direct target this Mortar and this Cannon, but we'll worry about that later on. That's for, like, Phase 2 of the Lalo. So, yes, we can direct target five different defenses. This is a bit more than you'll normally get. Normally, you'll only get three. So, this is really good for Lalo because it means that we're targeting as many defenses as possible, and the more that you're targeting at once, the more likely the base is going to go down. You, what you never want with the Lalo is all of your loons on one defense. Some of the time, you can't avoid it, but if you can avoid it, like here, we want to spread our loons out in a line. So that's the second thing I want you to look at. Now, before we move on to phase two of Lalo, don't worry, chat. I hear you. I see this comment on like so many of my Lalo videos. Hooked, how many loons do we use on each defense? I got you, fam. Let's see if we can try and answer that question in the next couple of minutes. Now, Rather than give you an exact answer, because it's not an exact science, ultimately it's up to you as the attacker to decide, but I'll give you sort of like a range. So if you're doing Blizz Lalo, I would recommend about 15 to 17 balloons in the initial deployment. Why? Because you need a lot of loons to take out the core of the base. This initial deployment of your balloons that you see like here that we've got, their job isn't just to get these first defenses, you eventually want them to go and take out the core of the base. The remainder of the loons are only really used to take out other exterior defenses to force these loons into the base. So 15 to 17 loons for Blizz Lalo should be enough to kind of overwhelm it. And if you're doing Queen Charge Lalo, 12 to 14 balloons is sort of the range I'd be looking at um, to overwhelm the rest of the base. Obviously that will probably only leave you like three or four balloons for the Queen Charge Lalo attackers, but you don't need as many balloons because, well, you've just taken out more of the base than a Blizzard Lalo player has. So sort of, as long as you're in those ranges, you're pretty well off and uh, your Lalo deployment probably shouldn't be the reason for you failing. Now, just on the off chance you did want to get it down to an exact science, you only need three loons to take down an Archer Tower with one shot so that they don't sit on it. Four for a Wizard Tower, obviously three for a Mortar, uh, three for an Arch Tower, and then four up here. I don't think this is as important at Town Hall 14 as it was at previous Town Halls. I think this one's more centered around your Warden ability and how you use your spells more than anything. But if you were um, curious about that, I'm not going to bother with like an Expo. I think an Expo is like six. Um, but... Defense is so far in the base, you're going to kind of get Loon's Clump up on it anyway. But at, for your initial deployment, that would be known as the peak amount. And obviously, that's 17 balloons on the outside. Kind of exactly what we were looking for with the Blizz Lalo attack. Okay, so hopefully that answered all of your questions about the initial Lalo deployment. So currently, we've got one Hound and our 15 to 17 balloons down. Obviously, get your Warden down, get your minions down as quickly as possible. I'd look at at least putting down like six minions immediately. You just can't afford to time fail. There's no point failing just because you didn't get minions down. They're really easy to get down as well. It doesn't have to be in exact science. Just get down at least five to six minions down initially straight behind your Lalo and your Warden obviously get it down quickly because it gives the Loon so much extra extra health. Now with everything down there, you kind of look at, do we need an initial hay spell or freeze? Looking at this base, we don't really need either of them. We could kind of look at a hay spell potentially, um, but don't think it's extremely needed at this point. We'll save our spells for the core of the base. And the next thing we want to look at, so there's two parts to this. You need to be looking at your warden ability. So how are we going to maximize our warden ability? and your exterior balloons. So we'll actually start with the exterior balloons. What do I mean by that? So hypothetically, if we just did this initial deployment and just kind of left it, let's let's understand how the loons are going to path. They'll, they'll get all these down, get here and get here. 
They'll go to this cannon, and where are they going to go after the cannon? To the mortar right here. And is that a good thing? No. Because we don't want this initial group of balloons going outside the base. Because they could definitely, after this mortar, they're just going to keep going around the outside. In a perfect world, we want them to go for this eagle in the end. So what do we do? As soon as we've got like a hound and all their balloons down, we sneak a couple of balloons on in on this mortar and then a couple on this cannon right at the bottom as well because we want to force our loons back into the center of the base generally with like these flanking balloons you only need like two of them because the they'll be generally tanked for by the core lalu so that's the first thing we got to do and the second thing is looking at our warden ability and your warden ability with lalu is entirely centered around your headhunters now, yes, you obviously want to do it when it's convenient for your Lalo as well, and that's where a lot of the skill with the Warden ability comes, but you need to get your Headhunters in it. Particularly for this Lalo here, as you can tell, there's three defensive heroes up, but even just generally, Headhunters are so weak that without the Warden ability, they're useless. There are so many ground bows in Legends, even just like cannons and bomb towers and mortars that you see down the bottom here. They're not going to be shooting anything but the headhunters. So you need to maximize your warden. So obviously, this RC, we're going to be dealing with pretty shortly after this core compartment. So we're going to be looking at a pretty early warden ability. Now, one of the things with headhunters that lots of people do, and I'm, I'm guilty of this that you really shouldn't do, if you've got three headhunters like you see here, don't put them all on the same tile. Because if there's a spring trap right here, if there's a spring trap in any of here, so three headhunters is 18 troop space and a spring trap can actually spring them all and then I guarantee you will fail the attack. What you should be really doing is spreading them out just by a couple of tiles so that they all don't clump up. But yes, get all those headhunters in the warden ability um, and you just got to maximize it. Put, generally, you're going to look at putting the headhunters down one or two, uh, no, maybe three or four seconds before your Warden ability. They travel pretty quickly, but you have to get the Headhunters in the Warden. That is a non-negotiable. Now, whilst your Loons are in the Warden ability, this is when you're going to kind of look at using your Haste spells, um, particularly because if they're invincible, you want them going through as much of the base as possible, and then you'll kind of look at your free spells after that. But while I talk about that, let's go into me, because I did this attack live as well. Okay, here we are. Obviously, this Sui is going fantastically. We might actually clear up most of the base, but we are worried about the Lalo here. Um, I figured we've talked about it for like, it's like five or six minutes there, but showing it live so that you can see it in action is really important. We get close to that uh, one minute 30 mark, and here we go. So we got the one hound. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. Get the warden down. Five or six minions. See how weak this hound is? So we'll get the second one in there. Got our funnel uh, lean troops already. We're going to get a haste like here. And here we go. There we go. One, two, three. Again, over there. And look at this. We're looking really good at the moment. Look at us. We've mastered our freeze spells. There's another haste. There's another freeze. And look at this. This is completely wrecked. Now, don't get me wrong, right? This was pretty easy for Lalo. Um, and obviously, that's the point of a beginner's guide. But this is something that's a bit easy. But if you can master the concepts that I just showed there in 40 seconds, because that's how long that took, then you will be really well set up to deal with the more difficult bases. Look at all these swag spells. Base is absolutely trash. But we knew that already because it's a hooked base. Okay, that's going to be it for today. Just trying to keep the video as short as possible. But what did we talk about? The main things we talked about were spells. So important. So important. Practice those free spells. Learn how to use the haste spells. Master both of them. The next thing that we really talked about is understanding what to do with your initial deployment. I want to see your you figuring out what to do with your hound, which defenses you can target with your balloons. Then obviously, which defenses you can target with your loons on the outside of the base to set your funnel in the middle. And then obviously, we're going to finish it off with the warden ability. The warden ability is key. You can be terrible at Lalo. I'm actually not great at Lalo, but I know how to use the warden ability and get the most out of him. And that sets me up for success in the entire attack. But if you've got any more questions, ask them down below. I'm going to be releasing the advanced Lalo guide in two days time so if you don't get your question answered today maybe you will in that but that's it from me i really hope you enjoyed this i hope you learned a few things i've enjoyed doing it for you if you did uh like comment and subscribe 
maybe I'll see you in two days' time.